everybody. Welcome back to Here Pal Here. My name is Pal. Uh, kind of excited to be back, <laughs> honestly. So uh, thank you everybody for your support from the last video. I really appreciate everybody's kind words and uh, you know wishes for good healing. Uh, I am healing very well. My finger is almost back to normal. Uh, I don't want to gross anybody out, but I'll show you guys my finger kind of up close. Uh, it's looking way better. You can probably still see a lot of where the uh, scarring was. There's a little bit of a scab left here in the middle, but I mean, this whole thing was just like really, really nasty. Um, I had basically like four big cuts, you know, the length of there. So uh, they couldn't really stitch it up because there was it was just kind of shredded across like four big lines. So there was nothing to sew anything to. It was kind of gross. So uh, <clears throat> apologies for that description, but um, it's way better now. It like uh, barely hurts at all anymore. And uh, I thankfully don't have any kind of permanent damage to speak of. So there's no... Uh, damage to the tendon here or like it didn't go into the bone or anything like that um, it was basically just like through the skin and uh, yeah it was a pretty vicious cut so I'm, I'm happy that it wasn't worse and um, in this video I kind of want to talk about some of the things that were kind of going through my mind the past few weeks um, some of the bad and some of the good that came out of this I guess so one thing that it got me thinking about is just uh, basically being very grateful for <laughs> having all of my uh, fingers and um, and kind of being able to use all of them. I did the video not that long ago, like it was probably a few months ago, where I talked about how I learned how to use all 10 fingers when playing guitar, including the thumbs. And uh, yeah, like it's just, it would, it would really have, it would really suck to, to lose a finger. Like um, I would not be happy about that. And then of course that got me kind of thinking about some of the really famous uh, guitar players throughout history that have, um, you know, dealt with such handicaps or partial finger losses. And um, there's actually kind of quite a number of, of uh, very famous, really, really great musicians who have uh, dealt with such, um, you know, difficulties and hardships. The first one that comes to my mind is Django Reinhardt. And uh, I actually found out about Django Reinhardt. He's a very famous uh, gypsy jazz musician. If anybody doesn't know, I would highly recommend go even just on YouTube. There's a few videos. There's not many uh, because he was kind of playing in the 30s, 40s and 50s. So there's not that many videos of him uh, to be found, at least that I found, but, uh, but he has wonderful recorded music and you can listen to it and uh, find it all over YouTube. And there are some videos of him where you can see him playing. And uh, if anybody doesn't know the, the story, he basically suffered a, a, you know, severe damage to his fingers in a, in a fire. And basically he ended up with only really being able to use um, these two fingers, if I remember right. And these two were kind of fused together uh, in a way that uh, he wasn't really able to use them except for certain types of chords. I think he was still able to kind of, you know, use them for some things. But, uh, but really, like, he was left with these two fingers. And it's kind of amazing what he was still able to play. And, and really not just that, oh, he was like, okay, or that he was, you know, kind of acceptable or passable. It was like, he was amazing. He was incredible even after that. A uh, huge setback and um, and really like basically you know um, like like a huge inspiration and, and innovator <clears throat> for like a whole new style of music so uh, I definitely recommend checking him out there was a really great um, uh, little kind of mini it wasn't even a documentary so much as just like a little explanation of kind of his life and his impact on uh, popular music and not just guitar playing but popular music uh, because he really had a huge impact a lot of the big uh, jazz musicians um, even back in the U.S. Uh, were influenced by him, and he was influenced by a lot of, um, you know, like his uh, his own traditional like gypsy music, but also swing music and jazz music that had come over uh, from the U.S. So he, uh, it, it's incredible. Um, I'm going to link a video that I recommend everybody watch. I think it's from the How to Produce Like a Pro channel, but I can't remember. I'll dig it up and I'll I'll put it in the uh, in the description. So go check that out and and learn about Django Reinhardt. I actually learned about Django Reinhardt by my love of Black Sabbath and Tony Iommi. <clears throat> if anybody doesn't know, Tony Iommi is the guitar player for Black Sabbath, and uh, he's a huge inspiration to me, definitely one of my top five uh, guitar, um, you know, people that made me want to play guitar. And uh, he suffered an accident. Uh, he's a lefty, so it was on his right hand, which is his fretting hand. He lost uh, these um, fingertips, the middle two fingers. And uh, it was in an accident at work, um, like a pressing machine came down and chopped off his uh, fingertips. And um, yeah, crazy story, but he was uh, really depressed. He was just about to start uh, going off on tour with his uh, first, um, you know, kind of like successful band that he was in. And, uh, you know, he wasn't going to be able to go and he kind of like lost all his <laughs> motivation, obviously. And uh, he was feeling really bad. At first, he was determined that, uh, he, you know, he was going to 
try to keep playing, but I think like doctors told him like there's no way he'll ever play. Like it's just too too much damage, and he'll never be able to work around it. So I think he he got kind of discouraged, and then uh, um, I think it was his like boss at work or something something like that, if I remember the story right. Uh, he came over and he brought him a Django Reinhardt album to listen to. And at first he didn't even want to listen to it. And then finally he convinced Tony to give it a whirl and he listened to it. And he's like, yeah, okay, fine. It's great. Like the guitar player's great, but like, great. Like, what do you want from me? You know, he's still depressed. And he's like, well, that guy's playing with two fingers. And then Tony was like, whoa, like no way. So he got re-motivated to, to pick up the guitar and start playing. And at first he was going to try to play, uh, you know, righty. So he was going to flip over, but he, he was too kind of like too advanced at that point in his like playing. So it was too awkward for him and he couldn't do it. So then he made prosthesis for himself. He melted down shampoo bottles and he made fingertips for himself. And um, and then, you know, the story from there should be probably obvious to everyone. I mean, he basically invented heavy metal and, um, you know, heavy music as as we kind of know it from, from that genre. So just really like two obvious huge influences on uh, lots of, you know, lots of impact, uh, across the, the world, <laughs> um, from, from those two bands and, and really like, you know, the, the innovations kind of came about as a result of the injuries as well. And or dealing with the, you know, kind of the limitations of those, uh, uh, you know, of those injuries. So I just think that was very interesting because like, like I only went to playing lighter strings and, um, you know, tuning down and all this kind of stuff as a result of trying to make it easier for him to play. So yeah, I, I just think you know that that was interesting that somebody could have those kinds of injuries and uh, and still just you know keep going. And then just recently, I learned about a new um, you know kind of uh, uh, guitar player. And um, oh my god, I can't believe I forgot his name. I was going to mention it in the video too. I read an article by John Bollinger, which is a, a, a great um, guy at the Premier Guitar. Oh, shoot, what was his name? Joey Shaver, I think, or something? I can't remember the name. I'm going to put it on the screen. <laughs> I feel terrible. Uh, he's new to me, so that's why it's not like, uh, you know, it's not sticking in my mind. But um, basically a country artist. It's not something that I would have normally listened to growing up. And I'm only kind of now getting into this kind of music. So, uh, But anyway, so this was another guy who lost um, fingertips and kept playing. And I uh, just wanted to mention that as well. But there are other people, and um, obviously people with with other limitations, like you have Jeff Healy, who was blind, and there's many blind um, blues artists who were uh, wonderful guitar players, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just very interesting, and I just wanted to talk about that. So I think, you know, that is uh, something that I was kind of thinking about a lot. Um, and just, you know, there was, there was a video actually just before my, uh, you know, or actually it was right after, right after my uh, accident that I saw from Rhett Schull, he, he broke his collarbone from uh, biking or whatever. And, you know, he was talking about kind of the, the feeling of like, oh man, he can't play. And like, he, it's a reminder of how, how blessed <laughs> like we are if we can play. So I just, you know, it, it was, it was kind of interesting and, and really kind of had me thinking a lot about these kinds of things. And um, another thing that uh, I also wanted to mention from Rhett Schull was uh, a few weeks back I saw a video from him where he had um, Joey Landreth on and he was giving him slide lessons and uh, you know I've been playing a lot of slide the past uh, you know couple weeks since his accident because I was having a lot of trouble using this finger obviously even after the bandages had come off uh, it was still kind of painful for certain types of chords if I was like pushing down against the strings at all it was a little bit kind of uh, painful there the skin was tight and stuff like that so um, I was kind of limited and uh, and this is the other thing that I think came about from this that is really positive. It uh, kind of re-ignited um, my passion for learning, you know, slide and alternate tunings and all this kind of stuff. And, and even just, um, you know, alternate fingerings of certain chords. So I've talked about before in some of the other um, videos, like I mentioned, the one with the using my thumb. Um, there's, there's various chord shapes that I've learned to play now with uh, the thumb wrapped around the top of the neck. And... Um, if I, you know, couldn't use this, I would, I would still be able to finger certain types of chords like this, like a, a major seven chord or something like that, using the thumb instead of doing, you know, this kind of fingering. Uh, I mean, uh, slide tuning now, so that wouldn't really be the right, you know, sound. That's why I'm not playing it. But uh, you get what I'm saying. And uh, you know, it also kind of had me looking at um, what chords I can make with the fingers I did have available and/or the slide. Uh, and that, that video from Rhett was actually really helpful from uh, Joey Landreth explaining how to find the, um, you know, kind of the chord shapes that you need and be able to move around 
And I thought that was really cool. So uh, that was really helpful for me. And I was able to kind of start messing around with some kind of more major sounding, um, uh, you know, kind of experimentation with the slide here. Where, whereas before I would only play kind of like, like whatever the open tuning was and probably in a, in a minor, uh, you know, kind of thing. For, so it was, it was just interesting and I wanted to mention that. And, uh, and then it also had me thinking a lot about what I remember being kind of super intrigued by when I first discovered uh, Charlie Hunter. So uh, if anybody doesn't know, Charlie Hunter is an amazing artist. You should definitely go check him out. But he, he's, he's kind of, I guess, most famous for playing these kind of um, bass guitar uh, kind of combo instruments. Like, I don't even know what they're called. I think it's like Novax or something like that. But basically, like, he has like the lower three strings of a bass and then the upper strings of the guitar. And I think he's had various you know iterations of that so i think he, he like when i first discovered him i think it was he was playing an eight string version so he's like the five upper strings of the guitar the three lower strings of the bass and he was on a fan fret you know instrument and now i think he's been playing a seven string so he still has the low three strings of the uh of the bass and only the upper four strings of the guitar so that's pretty interesting stuff but uh it's amazing what he's what he's able to do and i remember seeing a video of him like i don't know probably like 20 years ago or something where he was explaining how he kind of went about developing his uh, his style and being able to move around. And, uh, and I remember he was saying like, what he did to practice is he would take like, like he, he imagined like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna play this bass note with this finger. And then what are all the chords I can play with the remaining fingers, um, you know, triads, whatever, like major chords, minor chords, seventh chords, you know, whatever, dominant seventh chords, whatever. And um, all while not being able to use this finger because I'm holding down a bass note. And then he did the same thing with this, like what are all the shapes I can play? Where, where can I get all the notes to get all the chords I can make? Same thing with this finger, same thing with this finger. And then, you know, that's just pretty incredible to think about this kind of stuff that like, that's not a limitation per se in the sense of like, you don't have a finger because it's injured or it's missing, but more just that you're using it for something else. And it really kind of opens up your, your mind to new possibilities. So I think it's just really cool and it all ties together with this, this topic for me. So um, anyway, I just wanted to do this video to really share these uh, kinds of things. Also to say thank you to everybody. It's been really awesome to see all of your comments. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's definitely probably helping me heal really fast. I think it's been going really well. Like uh, this could have ended much, much worse for me. And uh, I'm, I'm very grateful that it, that it didn't. So it seems like it's, it's going to be fine. Um, I pretty much have full motion and it doesn't hurt anymore. There's a little bit of, um, you know, kind of scabbing still left there. So it's a little bit painful if I bang it into something, but for the most part, I can do everything. I'm back to normal already. So uh, I hope to just be back to kind of normal tunings and normal playing, um, you know, before long and probably another week or so, maybe even less. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys liked the video. I hope everybody's safe and keeping, you know, <laughs> good care of your fingers and appreciating what you have. And uh, also, if you do have any kind of limitations, and it might not be, you know, your fingers might be something else, I would just still encourage you to, uh, you know, keep playing and, and look for that passion and see what you can do um, with your guitar and, and uh, yeah, be inspired by some of these other people who have dealt with these kind of hardships and, and still made amazing music and really kind of like world changing, um, you know, kind of impacts that they've had so uh yeah check it out i hope everybody's good and i you know, hope you're enjoying your summer and i hope to see you in another video soon thanks everybody bye